Section 9 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2, Part 5 Made Dishes. From To Dress a Ham a la Braise. Clear the knuckle, take off the sword, and lay it in water to freshen. Then tie it about with string. Take slices of bacon and beef, beat and season them well with spice and sweet herbs. Then lay them in the bottom of a kettle with onions, with parsnips and carrots sliced, with some sives and parsley. Lay in your ham the fat side uppermost, and cover it with slices of beef, and over that with slices of bacon. Then lay on some sliced roots and herbs, the same as under it cover it close and stop it close with paste put fire both over and under it and let it stew with a very slow fire twelve hours put it in a pan drudge it well with grated bread and brown it with a hot iron or put it in the oven and bake it one hour then serve it upon a clean napkin garnish with raw parsley note if you eat it hot make a ragout thus take a veal sweetbread some livers of fowls coxcombs mushrooms and truffles toss them up in a pint of good gravy seasoned with spice as you like it thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and a glass of red wine then brown your ham as above and let it stand a quarter of an hour to drain the fat out take the liquor it was stewed in strain it skim all the fat off put it to the gravy and boil it up with a spoonful of browning it will do as well as the essence of ham sometimes you may serve it up with a ragout of crawfish and sometimes with carp sauce to roast a ham or gammon take off the sword or what we call the skin or rind and lay it in lukewarm water for two or three hours then lay it in a pan pour upon it a quart of canary and let it steep in it for ten or twelve hours when you have spitted it put some sheets of white paper over the fat side pour the canary in which it was soaked in the dripping pan and baste with it all the time it is roasting when it is roasted enough pull off the paper and drudge it well with crumbled bread and parsley shred fine make the fire brisk and brown it well if you eat it hot garnish it with raspings of bread if cold serve it on a clean napkin and garnish it with green parsley for a second course or thus take off the skin of the ham or gammon when you have half boiled it and dredge it with oatmeal sifted very fine baste it with butter then roast it gently two hours stir up your fire and brown it quick when so done dish it up and pour brown gravy in the dish garnish with bread raspings if hot if cold garnish with parsley to stuff a chine of pork make a stuffing of the fat leaf of pork parsley thyme sage eggs crumbs of bread season it with pepper salt shallot and nutmeg and stuff it thick then roast it gently and when it is about a quarter roasted cut the skin in slips and make your sauce with apples lemon peel two or three cloves and a blade of mace sweeten it with sugar put some butter in and have mustard in a cup various ways of dressing a pig first skin your pig up to the ears whole then make a good plum pudding batter with good beef fat fruit eggs milk and flour fill the skin and sew it up it will look like a pig but you must bake it flour it very well and rub it all over with butter and when it is near enough draw it to the oven's mouth rub it dry and put it in again for a few minutes lay it in the dish and let the sauce be small gravy and butter in the dish cut the other part of the pig into four quarters 
roast them as you do lamb throw mint and parsley on it as it roasts then lay them on watercresses and have mint sauce in a basin any one of these quarters will make a pretty side dish or take one quarter and roast cut the other in steaks and fry them fine and brown have stewed spinach in the dish and lay the roast upon it and the fried in the middle garnish with hard eggs and seville oranges cut into quarters and have some butter in a cup or for a change you may have good gravy in the dish and garnish with fried parsley and lemon or you may make a ragout of sweetbreads artichoke bottoms truffles morels and good gravy and pour over them garnish with lemon either of these will do for a top dish of a first course you may fricassee it white for a second course at top or a side dish you may take a pig skin him and fill him with force meat made thus take two pounds of young pork fat and all two pounds of veal the same some sage thyme parsley a little lemon peel pepper salt mace cloves and a nutmeg mix them and beat them fine in a mortar then fill the pig and sew it up you may either roast or bake it have nothing but good gravy in the dish or you may cut it into slices and lay the head in the middle save the head whole with the skin on and roast it by itself when it is enough cut it in two and lay it in your dish have ready some good gravy and dried sage rubbed in it thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour take out the brains beat them up with the gravy and pour them into the dish note you may make a very good pie of it as you may see in the directions for pies which you may either make a bottom or side dish you must observe in your white fricassee that you take off the fat or you may make a very good dish thus take a quarter of a pig skinned cut it into chops season them with spice and wash them with the yolks of eggs butter the bottom of a dish lay these steaks on the dish and upon every steak lay some force meat the thickness of half a crown made thus take half a pound of veal and of fat pork the same quantity chop them very well together and beat them in a mortar fine add some sweet herbs and sage a little lemon peel nutmeg pepper and salt and a little beaten mace upon this lay a layer of bacon or ham and then a bay leaf take a little fine skewer and stick just in about two inches long to hold them together then pour a little melted butter over them and send them to the oven to bake when they are enough lay them in your dish and pour good gravy over them with mushrooms and garnish with lemon a pig in jelly cut it into quarters and lay it into your stew pan put in one calf's foot and the pig's feet a pint of rhenish wine the juice of four lemons and one quart of water three or four blades of mace two or three cloves some salt and a very little piece of lemon peel stove it or do it over a slow fire two hours then take it up lay the pig into the dish you intended for it then strain the liquor and when the jelly is cold skim off the fat and leave the settling at the bottom beat up the whites of six eggs and boil up with the jelly about ten minutes and put it through a bag till it is clear then pour the jelly over the pig then serve it up cold in the jelly collared pig kill a fine young roasting pig dress off the hair and draw it and wash it clean rip it open from one end to the other and take out all the bones rub it all over with pepper and salt a little cloves and mace beat fine six sage leaves and sweet herbs chopped small roll up your pig tight and bind it with a fillet fill the pot you intend to boil it in with soft water a bunch of sweet herbs some peppercorns some cloves and mace 
a handful of salt and a pint of vinegar when the liquor boils put in your pig boil it till it is tender take it up and when it is almost cold bind it over again put it into an earthen pan and pour the liquor your pig was boiled in over it and always keep it covered when you want it take it out of the pan untie the fillet as far as you want to cut it then cut it in slices and lay it in your dish garnish with parsley to dress a pig the french way spit your pig lay it down to the fire let it roast till it is thoroughly warm then cut it off the spit and divide it in twenty pieces set them to stew in half a pint of white wine and a pint of strong broth seasoned with grated nutmeg pepper two onions cut small and some stripped thyme let it stew an hour then put to it half a pint of strong gravy a piece of butter rolled in flour some anchovies and a spoonful of vinegar or mushroom pickle when it is enough lay it in your dish and pour the gravy over it then garnish with orange and lemon to dress a pig or pear douille cut off the head and divide it into quarters lard them with bacon season them well with mace cloves pepper nutmeg and salt lay a layer of fat bacon at the bottom of a kettle lay the head in the middle and the quarters round then put in a bay leaf an onion sliced lemon carrots parsnips parsley and sives cover it again with bacon put in a quart of broth stew it over the fire for an hour and then take it up put your pig into a stew pan or kettle pour in a bottle of white wine cover it close and let it stew for an hour very softly if you would serve it cold let it stand till it is cold then drain it well and wipe it that it may look white and lay it in a dish with the head in the middle and the quarters round then throw some green parsley all over or any one of the quarters is a pretty little dish laid on watercresses if you would have it hot whilst your pig is stewing in the wine take the first gravy it was stewed and strain it skim off all the fat then take a sweetbread cut into five or six slices some truffles morels and mushrooms stew all together till they are enough thicken it with the yolks of two eggs or a piece of butter rolled in flour and when your pig is enough take it out and lay it in your dish put the wine it was stewed in to the ragout then pour all over the pig and garnish with lemon a pig matelo gut and scold your pig cut off the head and petty toes then cut your pig in four quarters put them with the head and toes into cold water cover the bottom of a stew pan with slices of bacon and place over them the said quarters with the petty toes and the head cut in two season the whole with pepper salt thyme bay leaf an onion and a bottle of white wine lay over more slices of bacon put over it a quart of water and let it boil take two large eels skin and gut them and cut them about five or six inches long when your pig is half done put in your eels then boil a dozen of large crawfish cut off the claws and take off the shells of the tails and when your pig and eels are enough lay first your pig and the petty toes round it but do not put in the head it will be a pretty dish cold then lay your eels and crawfish over them and take the liquor they were stewed in skim off all the fat then add to it half a pint of strong gravy thickened with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and a spoonful of browning and pour over it then garnish with crawfish and lemon this will do for a first course or remove fry the brains and lay round and all over the dish to dress a pig like a fat lamb take a fat pig cut off his head slit and truss him up like a lamb when he is slit through the middle and skinned 
parboil him a little then throw some parsley over him roast it and dredge it let your sauce be half a pound of butter and a pint of cream stirring all together till it is smooth then pour it over and send it to table barbecued pig having dressed a pig ten or twelve weeks old as if you intended to roast it make a forcemeat in the following manner take the liver of the pig two anchovies and six sage leaves chopped small put them into a marble mortar with the crumbs of a penny loaf half a pint of madeira wine four ounces of butter and half a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper beat them all together to a paste put it into your pig's belly and sew it up lay your pig down at a good distance before a large brisk fire put into your dripping pan two bottles of red wine and one of madeira baste it with the wine all the time it is roasting and when it is half roasted put two penny loaves under the pig if there is not wine enough put in more and when the pig is near done take the loaves and sauce out of the pan and put to the sauce half a lemon a bundle of sweet herbs an anchovy chopped small boil it five minutes and then draw your pig when it has roasted four hours put into the pig's mouth an orange or lemon and a loaf on each side skim off the fat and strain your sauce through a sieve and pour over the pig boiling hot serve it up garnished with lemon and barberries or you may bake it only keep it basting with wine to make a pretty dish of a breast of venison take half a pound of butter fly your venison and fry it of a fine brown on both sides then take it up and keep it hot covered in the dish take some flour and stir it into the butter till it is quite thick and brown but take great care it do not burn stir in half a pound of lump sugar beat fine and pour in as much red wine as will make it of the thickness of a ragout squeeze in the juice of a lemon give it a boil up and pour it over the venison do not garnish the dish but send it to table to boil a haunch or neck of venison lay it in salt for a week then boil it in a cloth well floured for every pound of venison allow a quarter of an hour for the boiling for sauce you must boil some cauliflowers poured into little sprigs in milk and water some fine white cabbage some turnips cut into dice with some beetroot cut into long narrow pieces about an inch and a half long and half an inch thick lay a sprig of cauliflower and some of the turnips mashed with some cream and a little butter let your cabbage be boiled and then beat in a saucepan with a piece of butter and salt lay that next the cauliflower then the turnips then the cabbage and so on till the dish is full place the beetroot here and there just as you fancy it looks very pretty and is a fine dish have a little melted butter in a cup if wanted note a leg of mutton cut venison fashion and dressed the same way is a pretty dish or a fine neck with the scrag cut off this eats well boiled or hashed with gravy and sweet sauce the next day to dress poultry to roast a turkey the best way to roast a turkey is to loosen the skin on the breast of the turkey and fill it with forcemeat made thus take a quarter of a pound of beef suet as many crumbs of bread a little lemon peel an anchovy some nutmeg pepper parsley and a little thyme chop and beat them all well together mix them with the yolk of an egg and stuff it up the breast when you have no suet butter will do or you may make your force meat thus spread bread and butter thin and grate some nutmeg over it when you have enough roll it up and stuff the breast of the turkey then roast it of a fine brown but be sure to pin some white paper on the breast till it is near enough you must have good gravy in the dish and bread sauce 
made thus take a good piece of crumb put it into a pint of water with a blade or two of mace two or three cloves and some whole pepper boil it up five or six times then with a spoon take out the spice you had before put in and then you must pour off the water you may boil an onion in it if you please then beat up the bread with a good piece of butter and a little salt or onion sauce made thus take some onions peel them and cut them into thin slices and boil them half an hour in milk and water then drain the water from them and beat them up with a good piece of butter shake a little flour in and stir it all together with a little cream if you have it or milk will do put the sauce into boats and garnish with lemon another way to make sauce take half a pint of oysters strain the liquor and put the oysters with the liquor into a saucepan with a blade or two of mace let them just lump then pour in a glass of white wine let it boil once and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour serve this up in a basin by itself with good gravy in the dish for everybody does not love oyster sauce this makes a pretty side dish for supper or a corner dish of a table for dinner if you chafe it in the dish add half a pint of gravy to it and boil it up together this sauce is good either with boiled or roasted turkeys or fowls but you may leave the gravy out adding as much butter as will do for sauce and garnishing with lemon another bread sauce take some crumbs of bread rub through a fine cullender put to it a pint of milk a little butter and some salt a few corns of white pepper and an onion boil them for fifteen minutes take out the onion and beat it up well then toss it up and put it in your sauce boats a white sauce for fowls or chickens take a little strong veal gravy with a little white pepper mace and salt boiled in it have it clear from any skin or fat as much cream with a little flour mixed in the cream a little mountain wine to your liking boil it up gently for five minutes then strain it over your chickens or fowls or in boats to make a mock oyster sauce either for turkeys or fowls boiled force the turkeys or fowls as above and make your sauce thus take a quarter of a pint of water an anchovy a blade or two of mace a piece of lemon peel and five or six whole peppercorns boil these together then strain them add as much butter with a little flour as will do for sauce let it boil and lay sausages round the fowl or turkey garnish with lemon to make mushroom sauce for white fowls of all sorts take a quart of fresh mushrooms well cleaned and washed cut them in two put them in a stew pan with a little butter a blade of mace and a little salt stew it gently for half an hour then add a pint of cream and the yolks of two eggs beat very well and keep stirring it till it boils up then squeeze half a lemon put it over your fowls or turkeys or in basins or in a dish with a piece of french bread first buttered then toasted brown and just dip it in boiling water put it in the dish and the mushrooms over mushroom sauce for white fowls boiled take half a pint of cream and a quarter of a pound of butter stir them together one way till it is thick then add a spoonful of mushroom pickle pickled mushrooms or fresh if you have them garnish only with lemon to make celery sauce either for roasted or boiled fowls turkeys partridges or any other game take a large bunch of celery wash and pare it very clean cut it into little thin bits and boil it softly in a little water till it is tender then add a little beaten mace some nutmeg pepper and salt thickened with a good piece of butter rolled in flour then boil it up and pour in your dish 
you may make it with cream thus boil your celery as above and add some mace nutmeg a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and half a pint of cream boil them all together to make brown celery sauce stew the celery as above then add mace nutmeg pepper salt a piece of butter rolled in flour with a glass of red wine a spoonful of ketchup and half a pint of good gravy boil all these together and pour into the dish garnish with lemon to stew a turkey or fowl in celery sauce you must judge according to the largeness of your turkey or fowl what celery or sauce you want take a large fowl put it into a saucepan or pot and put to it one quart of good broth or gravy a bunch of celery washed clean and cut small with some mace cloves pepper and allspice tied loose in a muslin rag put in an onion and a sprig of thyme a little salt and cayenne pepper let these stew softly till they are enough then add a piece of butter rolled in flour take up your fowl and pour the sauce over it an hour will do a large fowl or a small turkey but a very large turkey will take two hours to do it softly if it is overdone or dry it is spoiled but you may be a judge of that if you look at it now and then mind to take out the onion thyme and spice before you send it to table note a neck of veal done this way is very good and will take two hours doing to make egg sauce proper for roasted chickens melt your butter thick and fine chop two or three hard-boiled eggs fine put them into a basin pour the butter over them and have good gravy in the dish shallot sauce for roasted fowls take six shallots chopped fine put them into a saucepan with a gill of gravy a spoonful of vinegar some pepper and salt stew them for a minute then pour them into your dish or put it in sauce boats carrier sauce take a spanish onion and cut it in thin slices put it into a deep plate take half a pint of boiling water with a spoonful of vinegar a little pepper and salt and pour it over the onion shallot sauce for a scrag of mutton boiled take two spoonfuls of the liquor the mutton is boiled in two spoonfuls of vinegar two or three shallots cut fine with a little salt put it into a saucepan with a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in a little flour stir it together and give it a boil for those who love shallot it is the prettiest sauce that can be made to a scrag of mutton to dress livers with mushroom sauce take some pickled or fresh mushrooms cut small both if you have them and let the livers be bruised fine with a good deal of parsley chopped small a spoonful or two of ketchup a glass of white wine and as much good gravy as will make sauce enough thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour this does either for roasted or boiled a pretty little sauce take the liver of the fowl bruise it with a little of the liquor cut a little lemon peel fine melt some good butter and mix the liver by degrees give it a boil and pour it into the dish to make lemon sauce for boiled fowls take a lemon and pare off the rind cut it into slices and take the kernels out cut it into square bits blanch the liver of the fowl and chop it fine mix the lemon and liver together in a boat and pour some hot melted butter on it and stir it up boiling of it will make it go to oil a german way of dressing fowls take a turkey or fowl stuff the breast with what forcemeat you like and fill the body with roasted chestnuts peeled roast it and have some more roasted chestnuts peeled put them in half a pint of good gravy with a little piece of butter rolled in flour boil these together 
with some small turnips and sausages cut in slices and fried or boiled garnish with chestnuts you may leave the turnips out note you may dress ducks the same way to dress a turkey or fowl to perfection bone them and make a forcemeat thus take the flesh of a fowl cut it small then take a pound of veal beat it in a mortar with half a pound of beef suet as much crumbs of bread some mushrooms truffles and morels cut small a few sweet herbs and parsley with some nutmeg pepper and salt a little mace beaten some lemon peel cut fine mix all these together with the yolks of two eggs then fill your turkey and roast it this will do for a large turkey and so in proportion for a fowl let your sauce be good gravy with mushrooms truffles and morels in it then garnish with lemon and for variety sake you may lard your fowl or turkey to stew a turkey brown take your turkey after it is nicely picked and drawn fill the skin of the breast with forcemeat and put an anchovy a shallot and a little thyme in the belly lard the breast with bacon then put a good piece of butter in the stew pan flour the turkey and fry it just of a fine brown then take it out and put it into a deep stew pan or little pot that will just hold it and put in as much gravy as will barely cover it a glass of white wine some whole pepper mace two or three cloves and a little bundle of sweet herbs cover it close and stew it for an hour then take up the turkey and keep it hot covered by the fire and boil the sauce to about a pint strain it off add the yolks of two eggs and a piece of butter rolled in flour stir it till it is thick and then lay your turkey in the dish and pour your sauce over it you may have ready some little french loaves about the bigness of an egg cut off the tops and take out the crumb then fry them of a fine brown fill them with stewed oysters lay them round the dish and garnish with lemon End of section 9section ten of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part six made dishes from to stew a turkey brown the nice way bone it and fill it with a forcemeat made thus take the flesh of a fowl half a pound of veal and the flesh of two pigeons with a well pickled or dried tongue peel it and chop it all together then beat in a mortar with the marrow of a beef bone or a pound of the fat of the loin of veal season it with two or three blades of mace two or three cloves and half a nutmeg dried at a good distance from the fire and pounded with a little pepper and salt mix all these well together fill your turkey fry them of a fine brown and put it into a little pot that will just hold it lay four or five skewers at the bottom of the pot to keep the turkey from sticking put in a quart of good beef and veal gravy wherein was boiled spice and sweet herbs cover it close and let it stew half an hour and then put in a glass of white wine one spoonful of ketchup a large spoonful of pickled mushrooms and a few fresh ones if you have them a few truffles and morels a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover it close and let it stew half an hour longer get the little french rolls ready fried take some oysters and strain the liquor from them then put the oysters and liquor into a saucepan with a blade of mace a little white wine and a piece of butter rolled in flour let them stew till it is thick then fill the loaves lay the turkey in the dish and pour the sauce over it if there is any fat on the gravy take it off and lay the loaves on each side of the turkey garnish with lemon when you have no loaves 
and take oysters dipped in butter and fried note the same will do for any white fowl a fowl a la braise truss your fowl with the leg turned into the belly season it both inside and out with beaten mace nutmeg pepper and salt lay a layer of bacon at the bottom of a deep stew pan then a layer of veal and afterwards the fowl then put in an onion two or three cloves stuck in a little bundle of sweet herbs with a piece of carrot then put at the top a layer of bacon another of veal and a third of beef cover it close and let it stand over the fire for two or three minutes then pour in a pint of broth or hot water cover it close and let it stew an hour afterwards take up your fowl strain the sauce and after you have skimmed off the fat boil it down till it is of a glaze then put it over the fowl you may add just what you please to the sauce a ragout of sweetbreads coxcombs truffles and morels or mushrooms with forcemeat balls look very very pretty or any of the sauces above to force a fowl take a good fowl pick and draw it slit the skin down the back and take the flesh from the bones mince it very small and mix it with one pound of beef suet shred a pint of large oysters chopped two anchovies a shallot a little grated bread and some sweet herbs shred all this very well mix them together and make it up with the yolks of eggs then turn all these ingredients on the bones again and draw the skin over again then sew up the back and either boil the fowl in a bladder an hour and a quarter or roast it then stew some more oysters in gravy bruise in a little of your force meat mix it up with a little fresh butter and a very little flour then give it a boil lay your fowl in the dish and pour the sauce over it garnishing with lemon to roast a fowl with chestnuts first take some chestnuts roast them very carefully so as not to burn them take off the skin and peel them take about a dozen of them cut small and bruise them in a mortar parboil the liver of the fowl bruise it cut about a quarter of a pound of ham or bacon and pound it then mix them all together with a good deal of parsley chopped small a little sweet herbs some mace pepper salt and nutmeg mix these together and put into your fowl and roast it the best way of doing it is to tie the neck and hang it up by the legs to roast with a string and baste it with butter for sauce take the rest of the chestnuts peeled and skinned put them into some good gravy with a little white wine and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour then take up your fowl lay it in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon pullets a la sainte mena after having trussed the legs in the body slit them along the back spread them open on a table take out the thigh bones and beat them with a rolling pin then season them with pepper salt mace nutmeg and sweet herbs after that take a pound and a half of veal cut it into thin slices and lay it in a stew pan of a convenient size to stew the pullets in cover it and set it over a stove or slow fire and when it begins to cleave to the pan stir in a little flour shake the pan about till it be a little brown then pour in as much broth as will stew the fowls stir it together put in a little whole pepper an onion and a little piece of bacon or ham then lay in your fowls cover them close and let them stew half an hour then take them out lay them on the gridiron to brown on the inside then lay them before the fire to do on the outside strew them over with the yolk of an egg some crumbs of bread and baste them with a little butter let them be of a fine brown and boil the gravy till there is about enough for sauce strain it 
put a few mushrooms in and a little piece of butter rolled in flour lay the pullets in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon note you may brown them in the oven or fry them which you please chicken surprise if a small dish one large fowl will do roast it and take the lean from the bone cut it in thin slices about an inch long toss it up with six or seven spoonfuls of cream and a piece of butter rolled in flour as big as a walnut boil it up and set it to cool then cut six or seven thin slices of bacon round place them in a petty pan and put some force meat on each side work them up in the form of a french roll with a raw egg in your hand leaving a hollow place in the middle put in your fowl and cover them with some of the same force meat rubbing them smooth with your hand and a raw egg make them of the height and bigness of a french roll and throw a little fine grated bread over them bake them three quarters or an hour in a gentle oven or under a baking cover till they come to a fine brown and place them on your mazarine that they may not touch one another but place them so that they may not fall flat in the baking or you may form them on your table with a broad kitchen knife and place them on the thing you intend to bake them on you may put the leg of a chicken into one of the loaves you intend for the middle let your sauce be gravy thickened with butter and a little juice of lemon this is a pretty side dish for a first course summer or winter if you can get them mutton chops in disguise take as many mutton chops as you want rub them with pepper salt nutmeg and a little parsley roll each chop in half a sheet of white paper well buttered on the inside and rolled on each end close have some hog's lard or beef dripping boiling in a stew pan put in the steaks fry them of a fine brown lay them in your dish and garnish with fried parsley throw some all over have a little good gravy in a cup but take great care you do not break the paper nor have any fat in the dish but let them be well drained chickens roasted with forcemeat and cucumbers take two chickens dress them very neatly break the breastbone and make forcemeat thus take the flesh of a fowl and of two pigeons with some slices of ham or bacon chop them all well together take the crumb of a penny loaf soaked in milk and boiled then set to cool when it is cool mix it all together season it with beaten mace nutmeg pepper and a little salt a very little thyme some parsley and a little lemon peel with the yolks of two eggs then fill your fowls spit them and tie them at both ends after you have papered the breast take four cucumbers cut them in two and lay them in salt and water two or three hours before then dry them and fill them with some of the force meat which you must take care to save and tie them with a pack thread flour them and fry them of a fine brown when your chickens are enough lay them in the dish and untie your cucumbers but take care the meat do not come out then lay them round the chickens with the flat side downwards and the narrow end upwards you must have some rich fried gravy and pour into the dish then garnish with lemon note one large fowl done this way with the cucumbers laid round it looks pretty and is a very good dish chickens a la braise you must take a couple of fine chickens lard them and season them with pepper salt and mace then lay a layer of veal in the bottom of a deep stew pan with a slice or two of bacon an onion cut to pieces a piece of carrot and a layer of beef then lay in the chickens with the breast downward and a bundle of sweet herbs after that a layer of beef and put in a quart of broth or water cover it close let it stew very softly for an hour after it begins to simmer 
in the meantime get ready a ragout thus take a good veal sweetbread or two cut them small set them on the fire with a very little broth or water a few coxcombs truffles and morels cut small with an ox palate if you have it stew them all together till they are enough and when your chickens are done take them up and keep them hot then strain the liquor they were stewed in skim the fat off and pour into your ragout add a glass of red wine a spoonful of ketchup and a few mushrooms then boil all together with a few artichoke bottoms cut in four and asparagus tops if your sauce is not thick enough take a little piece of butter rolled in flour and when enough lay your chickens in the dish and pour the ragout over them garnish with lemon or you may make your sauce thus take the gravy the fowls were stewed in strain it skim off the fat have ready half a pint of oysters with the liquor strained put them to your gravy with a glass of white wine a good piece of butter rolled in flour then boil them all together and pour over your fowls garnish with lemon to marinate fowls take a fine large fowl or turkey raise the skin from the breastbone with your finger then take a veal sweetbread and cut it small a few oysters a few mushrooms an anchovy some pepper a little nutmeg some lemon peel and a little thyme chop all together small and mix it with the yolk of an egg stuff it in between the skin and the flesh but take great care you do not break the skin and then stuff what oysters you please into the body of the fowl you may lard the breast of the fowl with bacon if you choose it paper the breast and roast it make good gravy and garnish with lemon you may add a few mushrooms to the sauce to broil chickens slit them down the back and season them with pepper and salt lay them on a very clear fire and at a great distance let the inside lie next the fire till it is above half done then turn them round and take great care the fleshy side do not burn and let them be of a fine brown let your sauce be good gravy with mushrooms and garnish with lemon and the livers broiled the gizzards cut slashed and broiled with pepper and salt or this sauce take a handful of sorrel dipped in boiling water drain it and have ready half a pint of good gravy a shallot shred small and some parsley boiled very green thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and add a glass of red wine then lay your sorrel in heaps round the fowls and pour the sauce over them garnish with lemon note you may make just what sauce you fancy pulled chickens take three chickens boil them just fit for eating but not too much when they are boiled enough flay all the skin off and take the white flesh off the bones pull it into pieces about as thick as a large quill and half as long as your finger have ready a quarter of a pint of good cream and a piece of fresh butter about as big as an egg stir them together till the butter is all melted and then put in your chicken with the gravy that came from them give them two or three tosses round on the fire put them into a dish and send them up hot note the legs pinions and rump must be peppered and salted done over with the yolk of an egg and bread crumbs and broiled on a clear fire put the white meat with the rump in the middle and the legs and pinions round a pretty way of stewing chickens take two fine chickens half boil them then take them up in a pewter or silver dish if you have one cut up your fowls and separate all the joint bones one from another and then take out the breast bones if there is not liquor enough from the fowls add a few spoonfuls of the water they were boiled in put in a blade of mace and a little salt cover it close with another dish 
set it over a stove or chafing dish of coals let it stew till the chickens are enough and then send them hot to the table in the same dish they were stewed in note this is a very pretty dish for any sick person or for a lying in lady for change it is better than butter and the sauce is very agreeable and pretty note well you may do rabbits partridges or more game this way chickens chiringate cut off their feet break the breastbone flat with a rolling pin but take care you do not break the skin flour them fry them of a fine brown in butter then drain all the fat out of the pan but leave the chickens in lay a pound of gravy beef cut very thin over your chickens and a piece of veal cut very thin a little mace two or three cloves some whole pepper an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs and a piece of carrot and then pour in a quart of boiling water cover it close let it stew for a quarter of an hour then take out the chickens and keep them hot let the gravy boil till it is quite rich and good then strain it off and put it into your pan again with two spoonfuls of red wine and a few mushrooms put in your chickens to heat then take them up lay them into your dish and pour your sauce over them garnish with lemon and a few slices of cold ham broiled note you may fill your chickens with forcemeat and lard them with bacon and add truffles morels and sweetbreads cut small but then it will be a very high dish chickens boiled with bacon and celery boil two chickens very white in a pot by themselves and a piece of ham or good thick bacon boil two bunches of celery tender then cut them about two inches long all the white part put it into a saucepan with half a pint of cream a piece of butter rolled in flour and some pepper and salt set it on the fire and shake it often when it is thick and fine lay your chickens in the dish and pour your sauce in the middle that the celery may lie between the fowls and garnish the dish all round with slices of ham or bacon note if you have cold ham in the house that cut into slices and broiled does full as well or better to lay round the dish chickens with tongues a good dish for a great deal of company take six small chickens boiled very white six hogs tongues boiled and peeled a cauliflower boiled very white in milk and water whole and a good deal of spinach boiled green then lay your cauliflower in the middle the chickens close all round and the tongues round them with the roots outward and the spinach in little heaps between the tongues garnish with little pieces of bacon toasted and lay a little piece on each of the tongues scotch chickens first wash your chickens dry them in a clean cloth and singe them then cut them into quarters put them into a stew pan or saucepan and just cover them with water put in a blade or two of mace and a little bundle of parsley cover them close and let them stew half an hour then chop half a handful of clean washed parsley and throw in and have ready six eggs whites and all beat fine let your liquor boil up and pour the eggs all over them as it boils then send all together hot in a deep dish but take out the bundle of parsley first you must be sure to skim them well before you put in your mace and the broth will be fine and clear note this is also a very pretty dish for sick people but the scotch gentlemen are very fond of it to stewed chickens the dutch way take two chickens truss them as for boiling beat fine six cloves and four blades of mace a handful of parsley shred fine some pepper and salt mix all together and put into the inside of your chickens singe them and flour them 
put them into a stew pan clarify as much butter as will cover them stew them gently one hour put them into a china bowl with the butter and send them up hot to stew chickens take two chickens cut them into quarters wash them clean and then put them into a saucepan put to them a quarter of a pint of water half a pint of red wine some mace pepper a bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a few raspings cover them close let them stew half an hour then take a piece of butter about as big as an egg rolled in flour put in and cover it close for five or six minutes shake the saucepan about then take out the sweet herbs and onion you may take the yolks of two eggs beat and mixed with them if you do not like it leave them out garnish with lemon ducks a la mode take two fine ducks cut them into quarters fry them in butter a little brown then pour out all the fat and throw a little flour over them and half a pint of good gravy a quarter of a pint of red wine two shallots an anchovy and a bundle of sweet herbs cover them close and let them stew a quarter of an hour take out the herbs skim off the fat and let your sauce be as thick as cream send it to table and garnish with lemon to dress a wild duck the best way first half roast it then lay it in a dish carve it but leave the joints hanging together throw a little pepper and salt and squeeze the juice of a lemon over it turn it on the breast and press it hard with a plate and add to its own gravy two or three spoonfuls of good gravy cover it close with another dish and set it over a stove ten minutes then send it to table hot in the dish it was done in and garnish with lemon you may add a little red wine and a shallot cut small if you like it but it is apt to make the duck eat hard unless you first heat the wine and pour it in just as it is done another way to dress a wild duck take a wild duck Put some pepper and salt in the inside and half roast it have ready the following sauce a gill of good gravy and a gill of red wine put it in a stew pan with three or four shallots cut fine boil it up then cut the duck in small pieces and put it in with a little cayenne pepper and salt be careful to put in all the gravy that comes from the duck simmer it for three minutes and squeeze in a seville orange if no orange a lemon put it in the dish and garnish with lemon to boil a duck or a rabbit with onions boil your duck or rabbit in a good deal of water be sure to skim your water for there will always rise a scum which if it boils down will discolour your fowls etc they will take about half an hour boiling for sauce your onions must be peeled and throw them into water as you peel them then cut them into thin slices boil them in milk and water and skim the liquor half an hour will boil them throw them into a clean sieve to drain chop them and rub them through a colander put them into a saucepan shake in a little flour put to them two or three spoonfuls of cream a good piece of butter stew all together over the fire till they are thick and fine lay the duck or rabbit in the dish and pour the sauce all over if a rabbit you must pluck out the jaw bones and stick one in each eye the small end inwards or you may make this sauce for a change take one large onion cut it small half a handful of parsley clean washed and picked chop it small a lettuce cut small a quarter of a pint of good gravy a good piece of butter rolled in a little flour add a little juice of lemon a little pepper and salt let all stew together for half an hour then add two spoonfuls of red wine this sauce is most proper for a duck 
lay your duck in the dish and pour your sauce over it to dress a duck with green peas put a deep stew pan over the fire with a piece of fresh butter singe your duck and flour it turn it in the pan two or three minutes then pour out all the fat but let the duck remain in the pan put to it a pint of good gravy a pint of peas two lettuces cut small a small bundle of sweet herbs a little pepper and salt cover them close and let them stew for half an hour now and then give the pan a shake when they are just done grate in a little nutmeg and put in a very little beaten mace and thicken it either with a piece of butter rolled in flour or the yolk of an egg beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream shake it all together for three or four minutes take out the sweet herbs lay the duck in the dish and pour the sauce over it you may garnish with boiled mint chopped or let it alone to dress a duck with cucumbers take three or four cucumbers pare them take out the seeds cut them into little pieces lay them in vinegar for two or three hours before with two large onions peeled and sliced then do your duck as above then take the duck out and put in the cucumbers and onions first drain them in a cloth let them be a little brown shake a little flour over them in the meantime let your duck be stewing in the saucepan with a pint of gravy for a quarter of an hour then add to it the cucumbers and onions with pepper and salt to your palate a good piece of butter rolled in flour and two or three spoonfuls of red wine shake all together and let it stew for eight or ten minutes then take up your duck and pour the sauce over it or you may roast your duck and make this sauce and pour over it but then half a pint of gravy will be enough to dress a duck a la braise take a duck lard it with little pieces of bacon season it inside and out with pepper and salt lay a layer of bacon cut thin in the bottom of a stew pan and then a layer of lean beef cut thin then lay your duck with some carrot an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs a blade or two of mace and a thin layer of beef over the duck cover it close and set it over a slow fire for eight or ten minutes then take off the cover and shake in a little flour give the pan a shake pour in a pint of small broth or boiling water give the pan a shake or two cover it close again and let it stew half an hour then take off the cover take out the duck and keep it hot let the sauce boil till there is about a quarter of a pint or a little better then strain it and put it into the stew pan again with a glass of red wine put in your duck shake the pan and let it stew four or five minutes then lay your duck in the dish and pour the sauce over it and garnish with lemon if you love your duck very high you may fill it with the following ingredients take a veal sweetbread cut in eight or ten pieces a few truffles some oysters a few sweet herbs and parsley chopped fine a little pepper salt and beaten mace fill your duck with the above ingredients tie both ends tight and dress as above or you may fill it with force meat made thus take a little piece of veal take all the skin and fat off beat it in a mortar with as much suet and an equal quantity of crumbs of bread a few sweet herbs some parsley chopped a little lemon peel pepper salt beaten mace and nutmeg and mix it up with the yolk of an egg you may stew an ox's palate tender and cut it into pieces with some artichoke bottoms cut into four and tossed up in the sauce you may lard your duck or let it alone just as you please for my part i think it best without end of section 10
Section 11 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2, Part 7 Made Dishes From To Boil Ducks the French Way. Let your ducks be larded and half roasted, then take them off the spit put them into a large earthen pipkin with half a pint of red wine and a pint of good gravy some chestnuts first roasted and peeled half a pint of large oysters the liquor strained and the beards taken off two or three little onions minced small a very little stripped thyme mace pepper and a little ginger beet fine cover it close and let them stew half an hour over a slow fire and the crust of a french roll grated when you put in your gravy and wine when they are enough take them up and pour the sauce over them to dress a goose with onions or cabbage salt the goose for a week then boil it it will take an hour you may either make onion sauce as we do for ducks or cabbage boiled chopped and stewed in butter with a little pepper and salt lay the goose in the dish and pour the sauce over it it eats very good with either directions for roasting a goose take some sage wash and pick it clean and an onion chop them very fine with some pepper and salt and put them into the belly let your goose be clean picked and wiped dry with a dry cloth inside and out put it down to the fire and roast it brown one hour will roast a large goose three quarters of an hour a small one serve it in your dish with some brown gravy apple sauce in a boat and some gravy in another a green goose never put anything but a little pepper and salt unless desired put gravy in the dish and green sauce in a boat made thus take half a pint of the juice of sorrel if no sorrel spinach juice have ready a cullis of veal broth about half a pint some sugar the juice of an orange or lemon boil it up for five or six minutes then put your sorrel juice in and just boil it up be careful to keep it stirring all the time or it will curdle then put it in your boat to dry a goose get a fat goose take a handful of common salt a quarter of an ounce of salt peter a quarter of a pound of coarse sugar mix all together and rub your goose very well let it lie in this pickle a fortnight turning and rubbing it every day then roll it in bran and hang it up in a chimney where wood smoke is for a week if you have not that conveniency send it to the baker's the smoke of the oven will dry it or you may hang it in your own chimney not too near the fire but make a fire under it and lay horse dung and sawdust on it and that will smother and smoke dry it when it is well dried keep it in a dry place you may keep it two or three months or more when you boil it put in a good deal of water and be sure to skim it well note you may boil turnips or cabbage boiled and stewed in butter or onion sauce to dress a goose in ragu flat the breast down with a cleaver then press it down with your hand skin it dip it into scalding water let it be cold lard it with bacon season it well with pepper salt and a little beaten mace then flour it all over take a pound of good beef suet cut small put it into a deep stew pan let it be melted then put in your goose let it be brown on both sides when it is brown put in a quart of boiling gravy an onion or two a bundle of sweet herbs a bay leaf some whole pepper and a few cloves cover it close and let it stew softly till it is tender about an hour will do it if small if a large one an hour and a half 
in the meantime make a ragu boil some turnips almost enough some carrots and onions quite enough cut your turnips and carrots the same as for haricot of mutton put them into a saucepan with half a pint of good beef gravy a little pepper and salt a piece of butter rolled in flour and let this stew altogether a quarter of an hour take the goose and drain it well then lay it in the dish and pour the ragu over it where the onion is disliked leave it out you may add cabbage boiled and chopped small a goose a la mode take a large fine goose pick it clean skin it bone it nicely take the fat off then take a dried tongue boil it and peel it take a fowl and do it in the same manner as the goose season it with pepper salt and beaten mace roll it round the tongue season the goose with the same put the tongue and fowl in the goose put it into a little pot that will just hold it put to it two quarts of beef gravy a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion put some slices of ham or good bacon between the fowl and the goose cover it close and let it stew an hour over a good fire when it begins to boil let it do very softly then take up your goose and skim off all the fat strain it put in a glass of red wine two spoonfuls of ketchup a veal sweetbread cut small some truffles morels and mushrooms a piece of butter rolled in flour and some pepper and salt if wanted put in the goose again cover it close and let it stew half an hour longer then take it up and pour the ragu over it garnish with lemon note this is a very fine dish you must mind to save the bones of the goose and fowl and put them into the gravy when it is first set on and it will be better if you roll some beef marrow between the tongue and the fowl and between the fowl and the goose it will make them mellow and eat fine you may add six or seven yolks of hard eggs whole in the dish they are a pretty addition take care to skim off the fat note well the best method to bone a goose or fowl of any sort is to begin at the breast and take all off the bones without cutting the back for when it is sewed up and when you come to stew it it generally bursts in the back and spoils the shape of it to stew giblets let them be nicely scalded and picked cut the pinions in two cut the head and the neck and legs in two and the gizzards in four wash them very clean put them into a stew pan or soup pot with three pounds of scrag of veal just cover them with water let them boil up take all the scum clean off then put three onions two turnips one carrot a little thyme and parsley stew them till they are tender strain them through a sieve wash the giblets clean with some warm water out of the herbs etc then take a piece of butter as big as a large walnut put it in a stew pan melt it and put in a large spoonful of flour keep it stirring till it is smooth then put in your broth and giblets stew them for a quarter of an hour season with salt or you may add a gill of lisbon and just before you serve them up chop a handful of green parsley and put in give them a boil up and serve them in a tureen or soup dish note well three pair will make a handsome tureen full to make giblets a la turtle let three pair of giblets be done as before well cleaned put them into your stew pan with four pounds of scrag of veal and two pounds of lean beef covered with water let them boil up and skim them very clean then put in six cloves four blades of mace eight corns of allspice beat very fine some basil sweet marjoram winter savoury and a little thyme chopped very fine three onions two turnips and one carrot 
stew them till tender then strain them through a sieve and wash them clean out of the herbs in some warm water then take a piece of butter put it in your stew pan melt it and put in as much flour as will thicken it stir it till it is smooth then put your liquor in and keep stirring it all the time you pour it in or else it will go into lumps which if it happens you must strain it through a sieve then put in a pint of madeira wine some pepper and salt and some cayenne pepper stew it for ten minutes then put in your giblets add the juice of a lemon and stew them fifteen minutes then serve them in a tureen you may put in some egg balls made thus boil six eggs hard take out the yolks put them in a mortar and beat them throw in a spoonful of flour and the yolk of a raw egg beat them together till smooth then roll them in little balls and scald them in boiling water and just before you serve the giblets up put them in note well never put your livers in at first but boil them in a saucepan of water by themselves to roast pigeons fill them with parsley clean washed and chopped and some pepper and salt rolled in butter fill the bellies tie the neck end close so that nothing can run out put a skewer through the legs and have a little iron on purpose with six hooks to it and on each hook hang a pigeon fasten one end of the string to the chimney and the other end to the iron this is what we call the poor man's spit flour them baste them with butter and turn them gently for fear of hitting the bars they will roast nicely and be full of gravy take care how you take them off not to lose any of the liquor you may melt a very little butter and put into the dish your pigeons ought to be quite fresh and not too much done this is by much the best way of doing them for then they will swim in their own gravy and a very little melted butter will do note well you may spit them on a long small spit only tie both ends close and send parsley and butter in one boat and gravy in another when you roast them on a spit all the gravy runs out or if you stuff them and broil them whole you cannot save the gravy so well though they will be very good with parsley and butter in the dish or split and broiled with pepper and salt to boil pigeons boil them by themselves for fifteen minutes then boil a handsome square piece of bacon and lay in the middle stew some spinach to lay round and lay the pigeons on the spinach garnish your dish with parsley laid in a plate before the fire to crisp or you may lay one pigeon in the middle and the rest round and the spinach between each pigeon and a slice of bacon on each pigeon garnish with slices of bacon and melted butter in a cup to a la daub pigeons take a large saucepan lay a layer of bacon then a layer of veal a layer of coarse beef and another little layer of veal about a pound of veal and a pound of beef cut very thin a piece of carrot a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some black and white pepper a blade or two of mace four or five cloves cover the saucepan close set it over a slow fire draw it till it is brown to make the gravy of a fine light brown then put in a quart of boiling water and let it stew till the gravy is quite rich and good then strain it off and skim off all the fat in the meantime stuff the bellies of the pigeons with force meat made thus take a pound of veal a pound of beef suet beat both in a mortar fine an equal quantity of crumbs of bread some pepper salt nutmeg beaten mace a little lemon peel cut small some parsley cut small and a very little thyme stripped mix all together with the yolks of two eggs fill the pigeons and flat the breasts down flour them 
and fry them in fresh butter a little brown then pour the fat clean out of the pan and put the gravy to the pigeons cover them close and let them stew a quarter of an hour or till you think they are quite enough then take them up lay them in a dish and pour in your sauce on each pigeon lay a bay leaf and on the leaf a slice of bacon you may garnish with a lemon notched or let it alone note you may leave out the stuffing they will be very rich and good without it and it is the best way of dressing them for a fine made dish pigeons or poire make a good force meat as above cut off the feet quite stuff them in the shape of a pear roll them in the yolk of an egg and then in crumbs of bread stick the leg at the top and butter a dish to lay them in then send them to an oven to bake but do not let them touch each other when they are enough lay them in a dish and pour in good gravy thickened with the yolk of an egg or butter rolled in flour do not pour your gravy over the pigeons you may garnish with lemon it is a pretty genteel dish or for a change lay one pigeon in the middle the rest round and stewed spinach between poached eggs on the spinach garnish with notched lemon and orange cut into quarters and have melted butter in boats or thus bone your pigeons and stuff them with force meat make them in the shape of a pear with one foot stuck at the small end to appear like the stalk of a pear rub them over with the yolk of an egg and strew some crumbs of bread on fry them in a pan of good dripping a nice light brown put them in a drainer to drain all the fat off then put them in a stew pan with a pint of gravy a gill of white wine an onion stuck with cloves cover them close and stew them for half an hour take them out skim off all the fat and take out the onion put in some butter rolled in flour a spoonful of ketchup the same of browning some truffles and morels pickled mushrooms two artichoke bottoms cut in six pieces each a little salt and cayenne pepper the juice of half a lemon stew it five minutes put in your pigeons and make them hot put them in your dish and pour the sauce over them garnish with fried forcemeat balls or with a lemon cut in quarters pigeons stoved take a small cabbage lettuce just cut out the heart and make a forcemeat as before only chop the heart of the cabbage and mix with it then fill up the place and tie it across with a pack thread fry it of a light brown in fresh butter pour out all the fat lay the pigeons round flat them with your hand season them with a little pepper salt and beaten mace take great care not to put too much salt pour in half a pint of rhenish wine cover it close and let it stew about five or six minutes then put in half a pint of good gravy cover them close and let them stew half an hour take a good piece of butter rolled in flour shake it in when it is fine and thick take it up untie it lay the lettuce in the middle and the pigeons round squeeze in a little lemon juice and pour the sauce all over them stew a little lettuce and cut it into pieces for garnish with pickled red cabbage note or for change you may stuff your pigeons with the same force meat and cut two cabbage lettuces into quarters and stew it as above so lay the lettuce between each pigeon and one in the middle with the lettuce round it and pour the sauce all over them pigeons sir too force your pigeons as above then lay a slice of bacon on the breast and a slice of veal beat with the back of a knife and seasoned with mace pepper and salt tie it on with a small pack thread or two little fine skewers is better spit them on a fine bird spit roast them and baste with a piece of butter then with the yolk of an egg 
and then baste them again with crumbs of bread a little nutmeg and sweet herbs when enough lay them in your dish have good gravy ready with truffles morels and mushrooms to pour into your dish garnish with lemon pigeons compote take six young pigeons and skewer them as for boiling make a force meat thus grate the crumb of a penny loaf half a pound of fat bacon shred some sweet herbs and parsley fine two shallots or a little onion a little lemon peel a little grated nutmeg season it with pepper and salt and mix it up with the yolks of two eggs put it into the craws and bellies lard them down the breast and fry them brown with a little butter then put them in a stew pan with a pint of strong brown gravy a gill of white wine stew them three quarters of an hour thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour season with salt and cayenne pepper put the pigeons in the dish and strain the gravy over them lay some hot forcemeat balls round them and send them up hot a french pupton of pigeons take savoury forcemeat rolled out like paste put it in a butter dish lay a layer of very thin bacon squab pigeons sliced sweetbread asparagus tops mushrooms coxcombs a palate boiled tender and cut into pieces and the yolks of hard eggs make another force meat and lay over like a pie bake it and when enough turn it into a dish and pour gravy round it pigeons boiled with rice take six pigeons stuff their bellies with parsley pepper and salt rolled in a very little piece of butter put them into a quart of mutton broth with a little beaten mace a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion cover them close and let them boil a full quarter of an hour then take out the onion and sweet herbs and take a good piece of butter rolled in flour put it in and give it a shake season with salt if it wants it then have ready half a pound of rice boiled tender in milk when it begins to be thick but take great care it does not burn take the yolks of two or three eggs beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream and a little nutmeg stir it together till it is quite thick then take up the pigeons and lay them in a dish pour the gravy to the rice stir all together and pour over the pigeons garnish with hard eggs cut into quarters pigeons transmogrified take your pigeons season them with pepper and salt take a large piece of butter make a puff paste and roll each pigeon in a piece of paste tie them in a cloth so that the paste do not break boil them in a good deal of water they will take an hour and a half boiling untie them carefully that they do not break lay them in the dish and you may pour a little good gravy in the dish they will eat exceeding good and nice and will yield sauce enough of a very agreeable relish pigeons in fricando after having trussed your pigeons with their legs in their bodies divide them in two and lard them with bacon then lay them in a stew pan with the larded side downwards and two whole leeks cut small two ladlefuls of mutton broth or veal gravy cover them close over a very slow fire and when they are enough make your fire very brisk to waste away what liquor remains when they are of a fine brown take them up and pour out all the fat that is left in the pan then pour in some veal gravy to loosen what sticks to the pan and a little pepper stir it about for two or three minutes and pour it over the pigeons this is a pretty little side dish to roast pigeons with a farce make a farce with the livers minced small as much sweet suet or marrow grated bread and hard egg an equal quantity of each season with beaten mace nutmeg a little pepper salt and sweet herbs mix all these together with the yolk of an egg then cut the skin of your pigeon between the legs and the body 
and very carefully with your finger raise the skin from the flesh but take care you do not break it then force them with this farce between the skin and flesh then truss the legs close to keep it in spit them and roast them trudge them with a little flour and baste them with a piece of butter save the gravy which runs from them and mix it up with a little red wine a little of the force meat and some nutmeg let it boil then thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and the yolk of an egg beat up and some minced lemon when enough lay the pigeons in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon pigeons a la Sousel. take four pigeons and bone them make a force meat as for pigeons compote and stuff them put them in a stew pan with a pint of veal gravy stew them half an hour very gently then take them out in the meantime make a veal force meat and wrap all round them rub it over with the yolk of an egg and fry them in good dripping of a nice brown take the gravy they were stewed in skim off the fat thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour the yolk of an egg and a gill of cream beat up season it with pepper and salt mix it all together and keep it stirring one way till it is smooth strain it into your dish and put the pigeons on garnish with plenty of fried parsley you may leave out the egg and cream and put in a spoonful of browning a little lemon pickle and ketchup if you like it best pigeons in pimlico take the livers with some fat and lean of ham or bacon mushrooms truffles parsley and sweet herbs season with beaten mace pepper and salt beat all this together with two raw eggs put it into the bellies roll them all in a thin slice of veal over that a thin slice of bacon wrap them up in white paper spit them on a small spit and roast them in the meantime make for them a ragout of truffles and mushrooms chopped small with parsley cut small put to it half a pint of good veal gravy thicken with a piece of butter rolled in flour an hour will do your pigeons baste them when enough lay them in your dish take off the paper and pour your sauce over them garnish with patties made thus take veal and cold ham beef suet an equal quantity some mushrooms sweet herbs and spice chop them small set them on the fire and moisten with milk or cream then make a little puff paste roll it and make little patties about an inch deep and two inches long fill them with the above ingredients cover them close and bake them lay six of them round a dish this makes a fine dish for a first course to jug pigeons pull crop and draw pigeons but do not wash them save the livers and put them in scalding water and set them on the fire for a minute or two then take them out and mince them small and bruise them with the back of a spoon mix them with a little pepper salt grated nutmeg and lemon peel shred very fine chopped parsley and two yolks of eggs very hard bruise them as you do the liver and put as much suet as liver shaved exceeding fine and as much grated bread work these together with raw eggs and roll it in fresh butter put a piece into the crops and bellies and sew up the necks and vents then dip your pigeons in water and season them with pepper and salt as for a pie put them in your jug with a piece of celery a bundle of sweet herbs four cloves and three blades of mace beat fine stop them close and set them in a kettle of cold water first cover them close and lay a tile on the top of the jug and let it boil three hours then take them out of the jug and lay them in a dish take out the celery and sweet herbs put in a piece of butter rolled in flour shake it about till it is thick and pour it on your pigeons garnish with lemon to stew pigeons 
season your pigeons with pepper and salt a few cloves and mace and some sweet herbs wrap this seasoning up in a piece of butter and put it in their bellies then tie up the neck and vent and half roast them put them in a stew pan with a quart of good gravy a little white wine a few peppercorns three or four blades of mace a bit of lemon a bunch of sweet herbs and a small onion stew them gently till they are enough then take the pigeons out and strain the liquor through a sieve skim it and thicken it in your stew pan put in the pigeons with some pickled mushrooms and oysters stew it five minutes and put the pigeons in a dish and the sauce over to dress a calf's liver in a caul take off the underskins and shred the liver very small then take an ounce of truffles and morels chopped small with parsley roast two or three onions take off their outermost coats pound six cloves and a dozen coriander seeds and add them to the onions and pound them together in a marble mortar then take them out and mix them with the liver take a pint of cream half a pint of milk and seven or eight new laid eggs beat them together boil them but do not let them curdle shred a pound of suet as small as you can half melt it in a pan and pour it into your egg and cream then pour it into your liver then mix all well together season it with pepper salt nutmeg and a little thyme and let it stand till it is cold spread a caul over the bottom and sides of the stew pan and put in your hash liver and cream all together fold it up in the caul in the shape of a calf's liver then turn it upside down carefully lay it in a dish that will bear the oven and do it over with beaten egg drudge it with grated bread and bake it in an oven serve it up hot for a first course End of section 11.